Well, hello everyone. Welcome to MIBT Online, our second uh, preseason meeting of the year. I'm uh, Tim Kiefer, and I appreciate you joining us. Uh, thanks for being here. Hopefully you had a chance. If you haven't had a chance to watch us live, hopefully you've had a chance to go back and look at some of the archives from our clinic from last week. Last week we had a great presentation on formations, and we got lots of questions, a lot of interactions. We Let's get things started. We always start things off with our MIBT Online Play of the Week. And, and we're going to show the play. We'll take the number down. We'll take the phone number down for now. We'll put that back up here in a second. So here was the play. If you remember correctly, uh, it was on Twitter. We have a pass. We have a potential whatever we have here. Is it uh, we could have a DPI. We could have an OPI. We're going to play it again. We'll look at it. There's some contact, and then, the, and then everybody goes to the ground. So if you remember from the, the question, it was, is this OPI, is this DPI, or is this nothing? OK, so if we look at the results, we had 23, we had 53 people respond. We had 23 people say OPI. We had 2 people, or 2 percent, I should say, 23 percent OPI, 2 percent DPI, and overwhelmingly, 75% had this as a nothing. We got a no call. But Stan, on this play, what did you have? Look to me, uh, especially from the, the angle that we have, I can support an OPI because although both, both players were looking up at the ball, all of a sudden looks there, there seems to be a hand grab by the offensive player to yank down the defensive player. So. I could support an OPI, but I also would dare say that I'm not sure the back judge had a really good view of that. And so I could also easily see that it could be a no call. Okay. Robert, you saw this play. How did you rule? First of all, Tim, it was a great play. Great play to showcase. Uh, being a back judge, this was just right in my wheelhouse. You know, I, you know, I try to be as best athlete as I can be out on the field. You know, mechanically, it looked like the back judge did – uh, get in good position. He started the ball snapped at the 44. Back judge is at the 24, so he's a good 20 yards off the ball. He has good mechanics and gets back down near the goal line. His spacing looks decent. Uh, looking at the contact, you know, us back judges, it's got to jump out at you when you see when you throw your flag. You really got to love your flag, and I would not love my flag, but uh, hopefully my experience would take me off the ball and look at the action of the players. Cause once the ball's up, you know, the trajectory where the ball's going to come down. Now you key in on the players and, and I have to agree with Stan here. I mean, the offensive player was at a disadvantage and he, uh, even though he had more speed and athleticism and uh, the, you know, obviously he's the offensive receiver, but he, the defensive player was the one that wanted to make a play on the ball at the end. And the uh, offensive player recognized that. And he, he was smart enough to bring his arm down across his opponent and uh, it was just a slight enough uh, touch that you don't want to throw a flag, but the offensive player knew that the defensive player had a better or more advantageous position on getting to the ball. And that's a great point, and to Stan's point as well. I want to go back wide on it. I've got, I've got it frozen right here, and this is, this is the point where you can, you can see the ball. The ball is still up here, so it's still in play, and you can see both players are looking back for the ball. So if we try to advance it real quick here, you see what happens. You know, it's one of those where does, you know, you can see the offensive player's got his arm on, but is he doing anything with it? You know, what's he doing with it? Does he, is that enough of a pull to gain an advantage to not allow the defense? Because as we, sometimes we forget that the offense and the defense have equal right to the ball. So in a situation like this, the defensive player is now kind of becomes the offensive player in, in a roundabout way and can be interfered with when they're making a legitimate attempt on the ball. I think it's borderline. I think it's, it's a bang, bang. I can support an OPI absolutely because of what Robert said and also what Stan said. I can see that little hook and turn there at the end or right before the ball gets there. When you're seeing it live, like bang, bang, and, and we're going to go back to Robert real quick on this. Robert, you know, you made a real good point. You back judge. But a lot of times when we got that bang, bang contact where it's where I have to go and look at it frame by frame or slow it down, 
We do want to, lots of us want to pass on that because it was just so close. Did you look at this one as that maybe it was, did you have a clear, you know, separation of ball contact from what you saw or was it too close to where I had, where you had to like break it down in the film where in real time you're looking at it and it's kind of bang, bang. Yeah, I like to I like to officiate with the naked eye. That's high school football in Illinois specifically. We don't have replay, and uh, I'm not going to make calls based on replay. So it's got to jump out at me. There was not enough for me to throw my flag because it did not jump out at me. But what it does remind me as a back judge is don't focus on the ball. Once I know the ball is coming down the vicinity because I, I can see the trajectory of where it's going to land, my eyes need to be trained on the players. And my mechanics need to be solid, meaning my spacing needs to be good and I need to have a good look on the angle to make a good judgment. Because I've always said this, judgment is judgment. But I'm going to need to explain to the coach who's on the defense on why that's not OPI. And if I had thrown my flag, which I wouldn't have, I would have had to go to the offensive coach and explain why it was OPI. So uh, that's that's just what I need to remind myself whenever uh, – yeah, I see plays like this. I think it's just a great example, Tim, of showcasing it tonight. Now it's time for the MIBT Online Play of the Week for this week, August 14th. So this play, once again, will be available on, on uh, YouTube. It's on Twitter for the poll. So let's go wide on it, and let's see what we got here. So now we're going to have two questions on this um, for this week. Or we're gonna, I'm sorry, we're going to have a bunch of different answers. One question, a bunch of different answers. So now, let's run through the play. You're going to see we've got a formation. So look at the formation. Look where everybody's lining up. And now we're going to have a play that's going to be passed to the top of the, uh, top of the screen. We've got a play here, and uh, there it is. So potential catch, no catch situation. So let's run it again. So here's the question this week. First question, is this A, a legal or is this an illegal formation? So that's the first question. Is this an illegal formation? The first answer, I should say. The second answer is, is this OPI? Okay, so is this an illegal formation? Is this OPI? That's the second answer. The third answer, is it both? Is it an illegal formation and is it OPI? Or the final answer, that it's none of the above. It's none of those four work. It could be a combination that's not an option, or it's just a completely legal play. So here we go again. You've got, uh, is this a legal formation? Is this OPI? Is this both? Or is this uh, none of the above? That's the question for this week, this week's MIBT Online Play of the Week. And we'll have the Twitter, or we'll have the poll on Twitter. And I hope everybody will get a chance to, to look at it, and we'll talk about it next week.